Hi friends, thank you so much for tuning in to Shelby Artist's YouTube channel today. It is great to have you here and I hope you're doing well. There are some people that I want to talk to directly here on this video, specific people. Um, been on my mind a lot lately, close to my heart, in my um, mental space, whatever you want to call it. Um, and if I had the ability to call them or email them and talk to them directly another way other than a YouTube video, I certainly would do that. However, I do not, and this is the only direct way I am able to speak with these people. I am not going to say their names. You'll know who you are. First person. You make me so happy. I miss you a lot. <laughs> and um, I still have hope that you will be in my life in the future. And I know, and I hope you know this also, that you have been um, dragged through hell just like I have, maybe even worse. And that breaks my heart even more than it breaks my heart of you not being in my life. There was a mistake that I had made that I already told you about that um, I know that all things work together for the good according to Romans 8.28. <laughs> there's a song that's been in my head today by Casting Crowns and it goes like this I was sure by now that you would have reached down stepped in and saved the day but once again I say amen and it's still raining as the thunder rolls i hear your voice whisper through the rain i'm with you and as your mercy falls i raise my hands and praise the god who gives and takes away I will praise you in this storm and I will lift my hands for you are who you are no matter where I am and every tear I cry you hold in your hands you've never left my side and though my heart is torn I will praise you in this storm. I lift my eyes onto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I'm wearing contacts and my eyes are really itchy because I'm wearing makeup and I'm crying. I lift my eyes unto the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. That is actually a scripture. So that song was called um, Praise You in the Storm by Casting Crowns. And um, 
It's about lamentation. Lamentation is the most powerful form of worship. <laughs> because I will praise you in the storm is what lamentation is. <clears throat> lamentation is obeying the, the scripture that says it is God's will that we give thanks and everything. That is lamentation, the most powerful form of worship. It is embodying and knowing and having faith in and holding fast onto Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Okay. King Saul had dark ulterior motives when he um, was jealous of David and he fake friended David and he pretended to be <clears throat> David's friend, etc. But um, he really was messing with him. And that is exactly what my mom did to me. My mom is like King Saul. Um, if I were to be like David, my mom is like King Saul. Um, my, my mom took me to a church of hers when I was a child. I vividly remember. Um, and these women, she uh, took me to in this church. It was a group of about two or three women put their hands on me. And, um, she was really dark and practicing really dark witchcraft at that time. They were probably, you know, her Illuminati cult member friends. Um, they put their hands on me and they prophesied over me and they told my future at this church she took me to. And that was the moment when my mom went up and said, what did you guys get from, from your, you know, intuition from your hands on my daughter? And they told my mom, God has chosen your daughter. Your daughter is going to be more righteous than you, more powerful than you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, more bright light than you, et cetera. And that's exactly what the news that Saul heard, okay, about David. That's exactly what they said about David to Saul. And exactly what happened to Saul is exactly what happened to my mom. Jealousy, hate, envy, to the point of literally messing with, deceiving, and trying to kill. God's chosen Um, and I bring that up because, um, my, my mom, um, coerced me into doing a lot of things around the time that, um, she had stolen my daughter from me. Um, and one, one of the, one of the things, <clears throat> one of the things she coerced me into doing was moving to Ohio by myself and going to college there, et cetera. Um, and I did do that. And it actually, you know, she, her intention was bad, but here's the thing, Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. Okay. Um, it worked for my good. That experience, you know, it, it was, it was, it was hard. It was cold. It was dark. It was lonely. It was very painful, but it was actually, you know, God used that time to build my character and teach me about my, <laughs> my gifting of what he's using me for is the prophetic. So there was a bigger purpose. Okay. There was a bigger purpose. And I know it was not just painful for me. I know it was painful for you too. And probably even worse. I don't know. I'm sure it was. I can't even imagine. I know what, I know just some things about the story, not all. And, and what I know 
is worse than anything I've really ever gone through. And I'm so sorry about that. And it's not my fault. I don't take responsibility for that at all. And, and you know, I found out too late. <laughs> actually, I suspected and I actually got authorities involved. But, you know, the liar that my mom is. Speak of liars, Benjamin Netanyahu, Prime Minister of Israel, actually um, posted a video on YouTube today called Iran Lied, I-R-A-N-L-I-E-D, capital letters. I am so proud of Mr. Netanyahu. I actually watched um, Joel Osteen um, interview him, and I found out in that interview that um, Mr. Netanyahu said that he attended Cornell University in USA. And I thought that was so, wow. <laughs> wow. The leader of Israel was educated in the USA at Cornell University that I actually have a teaching from. He's also in the military and so is his father. I wasn't in the military, but my, my father was. So we have that in common too. Um, I'm very proud of Benjamin Netanyahu for posting a video today exposing Iran's dictator's blatant lies. In the same breath, in the same sentence, that they're spitting out huge blatant lies, they are, they are doing it while saying that we are righteous people who are very religious and stick to our religion. Did you know that your religion says it's okay to lie? That's funny. The enemy, the devil, Satan of, of, of God is actually called the father of lies, okay? And your religion says it's okay to lie and you are a world leader and you are lying to other world leaders. And Benjamin Netanyahu just exposed you today. Iran lied. I'm so happy what God is doing and, and, and using Prime Minister of Israel. I love it. You know, I was actually, this is all proof that I was correct in my previous video where I made about a year ago where I said that um, the whole reason God kept me alive and my uh, mission from God <laughs> was to expose what's hidden, expose the occult, Expose the darkness as light. Expose was the word of my mission from God. And God is doing a lot of heavy exposing right now. <laughs> Moving on to person number two. Oh, by the way, person number one. I'm praying for you. You'll always be a part of me. I'm part of you indefinitely. Girl, don't you know you can't escape me? Ooh, darling, cause you'll always be my baby. And we'll linger on. Time can't erase the feeling the strong. Girl, no, you're never gonna shake me. Ooh, darling, cause you'll always be my baby. I know that you'll be back, girl. When your days and your nights get a little bit colder. Oh, I know that you'll be right back, baby. Baby, believe me, it's only a matter of time. Oh, you'll always.
always be a part of me. I'm part of you indefinitely. Girl, don't you know you can't escape me? Ooh, darling, cause you'll always be my baby. I love you. Person number two. Of course, I love all these people. I love person number one and I love person number two. Person number two. All right. <laughs> 15 minutes and 40 seconds. Um, putting you as person number two because number two is the V for victory sign. And on Halloween, you did this shit because it was not your idea, daddy. It was your mommy's. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stuff I know about your mommy. That I wish you knew. That I, I that, that is so heavy. That I cannot say it. On a video. Um, as bad as my mother is, your mother is worse. So what my mom tried to do to me, she actually did do to you. It's very sad. I'm very confused about you. No one deserves any treatment like, like, you know, no one deserves any unjust treatment. The definition of unjust is not deserved, okay? What's, hap what's, what's happened to you in the past? What's happening to you now? see it as unjust. It's possible you could have brought it on. Or it's possible that we could be very similar in that way because we do have the same roles that you did not bring it on. And it's very, very possible actually that um, it's not your karma, but it's your family's karma. You know, the, the scripture says that I visit the iniquities of the parents to the third and fourth generation. And the generational curse breaker actually is the scapegoat who has had enough. Um... I don't think you're being scapegoated, but what I do think is that, well, what I know, you're being puppeted. There's no denying, handsome, that you have a lot of strings on you. And you even brought up that word in your prop choice with your son on your lap. You said he looks like a puppet. You look like a puppet when in, in your Halloween picture, you look like a puppet. And if you look closely and you really open your eyes, In that picture, in your Halloween costume, who else is in that picture? Who's photobombing that picture? Your mom. Puppeteer. You're the puppet. Your 
mom is your puppeteer. You're in your 50s. One word that sticks out is um, distraction. You are majorly distracted right now. And you will say that you're stuck and there's nothing that you can do. But in actuality, according to my uh, philosophical video about um, choose your own adventure, in any second, in any moment, you can choose which way you want the story to go. I'm gonna give you a choose your own adventure moment right now. I'm at 21 minutes and 10 seconds. Choose your own adventure. Which way do you want the story to go? Do you wanna continue path A to B stuck? in distractions with a lot of strings on you and puppeted. That's path A. Path B, what you do is you grab the scissors and you cut the strings off of you and you free to live the life you want. Okay, so path A you're choosing to continue living the current life you're living, the way you're living it. That's path A. You can choose. Path B. If, if you want a change and if you want freedom, you're gonna have to open your eyes. You're gonna have to look at your mama. And you're going to have to cut the strings. This is going to have to be in the spiritual. This is a spiritual choose your own adventure. Choose your own spiritual adventure. Path A, path B. Puppeted. or you've got no strings on you. Strings on you, no strings on you. It's your choice. Okay, wrapping up. Um, person number three. <laughs> you might not even watch this. Um, when I bumped into you the other day, it was purely, um, Unexpected accidental. I'm not stalking you. I don't stalk anyone, first of all. And and number two, if I was gonna stalk anyone, it wouldn't be you. <laughs> so that was a purely divine appointment, so to speak, when I bumped into you the other day. And I've actually been bumping into you like that at a lot of different places. I guess we hang out around the same area. But we actually talked the last time. And um, I really want to follow one of the agreements in the Four Agreements book, which is make no assumptions. But I am very intuitive and I can just see the puzzle pieces. And I'm gonna assume <laughs> what I see on the puzzle pieces and their shapes and everything, that these puzzle pieces go where I'm putting them, okay? Now, when you really play a puzzle game, you can think that way and you can put the puzzle pieces together and they don't connect. That's a possibility. You're not always right every time you put a puzzle together. But this is how I'm speaking. <sighs> um, intuitively. There's a saying, people avoid you when they know they did you wrong. And that's what I see 
on you about you. And I am assuming that the way that you did me wrong was lying. People do that a lot. Even people who claim to be religious, like the Ayatollah. I know that you are a Mason or an Illuminati member. I know. I see. I'm putting the puzzle pieces together, bro. I'm not blind to the Masonic church here. <laughs> You're a politician. You have the number 77 on your social media name. Puzzle pieces. Um story of my life. People think I'm dumb. <laughs> People don't know who they're talking to when they're talking to me. I did not intentionally go to this meeting. The destiny had put me there. And I spoke the truth in that meeting. And the person I spoke the truth to in that meeting replied to the truth I spoke to them with, what are you even doing here? Who talks to anyone like that in a civil conversation? And none of you know None of you know who I am. But I know what you did. I know that you lied. I know that you slandered my reputation. I did not do that to you. And I'm not going to do that to you intentionally because that's not who I am. I don't lure myself to idiots drama. I have my own life. I'm pursuing my own life and I'm minding my own business and I'm staying in my own lane. And if God wants to show me something through serendipity and if I'm going to speak the truth, this is why people hate me. I spoke about this in a previous video at the library. People hate me because I speak the truth. This is exactly why people hate me. It's exactly why they hated Yahshua also. They hated Yahshua because he spoke the truth. They hate me because I speak the truth. You hate me because I speak the truth the truth. When I introduced myself and I told everyone that I had a hand in getting you elected, this was the look on your face. I'm going to show you the look on your face, buddy. Why would you have that look on your face if you did not do me wrong and lie and gossip about me and slander my character with lies behind my back? Mr. Grabbing your penis with your hand. Oh my gosh. I did not just speak the truth. Oh no, I did not just do that. Did I just speak the truth? I shouldn't have done that. Now everyone's going to hate me. because I spoke the truth. Have a great day, guys. I'm at 30 minutes exactly right now. 
And you know, I probably spent about 10 minutes on each person because I did three people and I'm at the 30 minutes. I don't hate you. I don't hate anyone. Um, as I've started this video, preface, preface this video, these people have been on my, my mind, the closest to my mind lately, and so I'm just saying what I want and what I need to say to get you off of my mind. <laughs> um, and this is the only real um, way that I have to do it. Um, I am a lot wiser and I'm a lot smarter than you think. I do think things through, usually. Uh, I know that impulsivity is bad, and I, and, I, and I know that, you know, I, I used to tend to be like that. I'm the kind of learner where I live and I learn, and I know myself. I'm very, very self-aware. Anyway, I hope that, you know, we can all be friends. Person one, person two, and person three. I would love to have you in my life and on a friendly, good, happy level. Really. I love you. Peace.